This is a sample of the information provided as part of the flexible training resources available through HACCP.com. Our training courses are designed to provide training participants with an understanding of food safety and quality system elements and also offer user-friendly assessment activities and competency checklists to complete the training cycle. Cleaning and Sanitation Key Definitions for Cleaning and Sanitation Allergen a normally harmless substance which creates a reaction in the body of a sensitive individual. Adenosine triphosphate or ATP, adenosine triphosphate is a substance present in all cells. ATP is formed when energy is released from food during cell metabolism. ATPB aluminescence is a method commonly used in food businesses to verify the effectiveness of cleaning and sanitation activities. Cleaning, cleanliness is the absence of dirt, including dust stains, bad smells and garbage. Cleaning is the situation in which something is cleaned. Cross-contact, description of the incidence of allergenic materials becoming part of a foodstuff or process not specified to contain that foodstuff as a declared ingredient. Cross-contamination, description of the incidence of an unwanted material becoming part of a foodstuff or process. Detergent, a detergent is a synthetic material intended to assist cleaning including the removal of dirt and oil. The term was sometimes used to differentiate between soap and other surfactants used for cleaning. Detritus. Detritus is the remains of organic or inorganic materials that have been destroyed or broken up. pH. From potential of hydrogen. The logarithm of the reciprocal of hydrogen ion concentration in gram atoms per liter. Provides a measure on a scale from 0 to 14 of the acidity or alkalinity of a solution where 7 is neutral and greater than 7 is more alkaline and less than 7 is more acidic. Sanitation. Sanitation is the hygienic means of promoting health through prevention of human contact with, or consumption of physical, microbiological or chemical hazards. The hygienic disposal or recycling of waste. Sanitizer. Sanitizers are antimicrobial agents that are applied to non-living objects to destroy microorganisms, the process of which is also commonly known as disinfection. Wet cleaning. Wet cleaning is the most popular method used within the food industry. Detergents and sanitizers are used as part of wet cleaning procedures. Cleaning and sanitation development. When considering the development, Documentation and implementation of cleaning and sanitation within food safety and quality management systems. The following information should be considered to ensure effective outcomes about cleaning and sanitation. Cleaning and sanitation procedures. Cleaning and sanitation duties. Food handlers. Housekeepers and cleaning and sanitation staff. The steps in cleaning and sanitation. About cleaning and sanitation. Cleaning and sanitizing programs are an integral part of any food business, providing support for the food safety and quality management system through an established presence within all areas of the premises and surrounds. Cleaning and sanitation programs should be continually monitored and recorded to ensure their suitability and effectiveness. The importance of proper cleaning can be appreciated when one realizes that contaminated equipment is historically a major cause of foodborne disease outbreaks. Cleaning and sanitation includes many individual and complementary operations in every food premises. Cleaning procedures are commonly specific to the type of cleaning necessary. The priority for cleaning and sanitation tasks within any food business is for food contact surfaces, premises, equipment and utensils. Cleaning and sanitation procedures. The goals of cleaning and sanitation are to remove microorganisms. Remove food and other residues that provide the nutrition for microbiological growth. Remove food residues that could be classed as a hazardous food safety or quality foreign matter, if introduced to another food product, including allergens where applicable. Pursue the above-mentioned goals while not permitting the contamination, for example cleaning chemical contamination of food through cleaning and sanitizing applications. Appropriate cleaning and sanitizing procedures, in their planning and application, will reduce the risk of cross-contamination of product or process. Factors in the ability of cleaning and sanitation applications to reduce cross-contamination include avoiding spraying around unused, uncovered or uncontained food items or processing equipment. Avoiding the application or chemicals around unused, uncovered or uncontained food items or processing equipment. 
ensuring spills, detritus and waste are removed on a regular scheduled basis. Recording cleaning and sanitation applications and completions. Documented cleaning and sanitation procedures need to be in place to monitor and control related issues. This documentation must outline the boundaries that need to be addressed in ensuring safe and quality food production. Cleaning and sanitation procedures need to be developed, documented and implemented for all areas of consequence to food safety and quality. Where written cleaning schedules and procedures are used, they should specify areas and items to be cleaned and sanitized. Responsibility for particular cleaning and sanitation tasks. Method and frequency of cleaning and sanitation. Cleaning and sanitation chemicals to be used and their dilution ratio. Cleaning and sanitation utensils to be used. Cleaning and sanitation monitoring arrangements. Where appropriate, cleaning and sanitation programs should be formatted in consultation with relevant specialist expert advisors, including your cleaning and sanitation chemical suppliers where applicable. Cleaning and sanitation duties. There is a number of cleaning and sanitation related tasks which need to be delegated to specific staff within any food business operation. The following gives an indication for consideration of cleaning and sanitizing tasks within a food business, food handlers. All food handlers may be responsible for the day-to-day -day cleanliness of the food processing areas in which they work. They may also be responsible for the communication with the housekeeping department whenever specific cleaning is required or urgent issues arise. Food handler cleaning and sanitation duties may include cleaning and sanitizing food contact surfaces during throughout and at the end of production periods. Cleaning and sanitizing of small equipment, storage shelving, non-machine equipment and storage areas in the absence of housekeepers. Cleaning and sanitizing of their own equipment including knives and specialist utensils. Any task which is requested by supervisors. Housekeepers and cleaning and sanitation staff. Housekeeping and cleaning and sanitation staff are generally employed to carry out general and specific housekeeping duties relating to cleaning and sanitation among other tasks. Housekeeping and cleaning and sanitation staff duties may include cleaning and sanitation food contact and non-food contact surfaces during, throughout and at the end of production periods. Cleaning and sanitation of processing area equipment, utensils, fixtures and fittings. Cleaning and sanitation of all processing area floors, walls and ceilings. Maintaining waste and recyclable receptacles and the transportation of receptacles and loose waste and recyclables to bulk holding areas. Any task which is requested by food handling staff or supervisors. The steps in cleaning and sanitation. The following section provides an example of commonly applied cleaning and sanitation, commonly known as wet cleaning. Surface preparation, involves the removal of loose materials from the surface. This will be of obvious benefit to the process as food substances will be removed, and therefore make cleaning easier. Pre-rinse, using water, preferably hot water under mild pressure to flush away as much detritus as possible. Cleansing, detergents are used in their recommended dilution ratios in conjunction with water of an appropriate temperature to remove all of the detritus that is still on the surface to be cleaned. Rinsing, the surfaces are rinsed once again, preferably using hot water under mild pressure to remove any traces of detritus and detergents. If the detergent is not fully removed, it may reduce the effectiveness of the sanitizer in killing microorganisms. Sanitizing, now that the surface is free from detritus and detergent, an application of sanitizer is made to kill any microorganisms on the surface being cleaned and sanitized. Finishing rinse, a final rinse preferably using hot water under mild pressure will remove any sanitizer or chemical from the surface, therefore reducing the risk of chemical contamination of foods. It is important to consider that some sanitizer or chemicals are specified to be left on the surface, rather than being rinsed off. Cleaned and sanitized equipment and utensils must be stored on clean surfaces or in cleaned and sanitized areas, and handled appropriately to minimize contamination of food contact surfaces about chemical control. The use of chemicals within any food business must include elements which not only promote food safety, but which also promote the general safe use, handling and storage of all cleaning, sanitation, pest control, maintenance and other chemicals. 
This can generally be facilitated by ensuring documented procedures for chemical control are documented and available to everyone using chemicals. Chemical usage procedures may include familiarity with the type of chemical being used, including composition, strength, associated hazards. This information can generally be gathered from the SDS, labeling and manufacturer's instructions. Procedures may include appropriate specifications for use such as do not mix with other chemicals or do not add water. Labeling of decanted, diluted or prepared chemical mixtures to ensure they are not mistaken for other chemicals. Storing, handling and using chemicals away from foods, and in a way which prevents the contamination of foods. Defining the responsibility for chemical use. Training and competency verification procedures for team members required to handle or use chemicals. Chemical usage requirements. All pesticides, sanitizers, cleaners, polishes, lubricants and other toxic and non-toxic chemicals used in a food business must be necessary for the operation of the establishment. Unnecessary chemicals should not be found anywhere in the establishment used properly according to the manufacturer's label and SDS instructions. Properly labeled when chemicals are removed from the original container and put into a working container. Food containers should not be used as working containers for chemicals. Considerations must be given to the legal requirements for chemical handling and use. The use of some chemicals must only be conducted by specially licensed persons. Legal requirements also commonly include requirements for PPE to be worn. Chemical approvals Food business chemicals must be approved for use in the food establishment. Some products, such as food-grade lubricants, may contain statements by the manufacturer as being approved for use within the food industry or a specific industry sector. Before use within a food business, a confirmation must be received that chemical products are approved for specific use and will not potentially contaminate foods. It is important to consider that chemicals such as restricted-use pesticides can only be used by a certified pest control operator. Regulatory approvals may also be required for the use of some chemicals within food businesses. There are many different types of cleaning and sanitation chemicals available for use within the food industry. Detergents Detergents are used to remove dirt particles. They are not designed to kill microorganisms although their pH levels can affect growth and status. Detergents are chemicals that usually have a surfactant quality, making removal of dirt from surfaces easier. The most appropriate time to clean surfaces with detergents in solution or as recommended is immediately after use, removing food particles before they become hardened and more difficult to remove, and facilitate microorganisms' growth. Did you know that HACCP.com includes resources that allow you to create Manage and implement GFSI and HACCP based food safety and quality programs. Improve your food safety and quality skills and knowledge. Train and develop your team to create better food safety and quality outcomes. Find suppliers and service providers to partner with your business. The information and training resources available through HACCP.com included a variety of formats, such as website content, MP4 mp4 and text mp3 pdf and slideshow are you ready to take the next step in your food compliance journey visit hasup.com today to create your profile and access the full versions of our food safety and quality information packages and much more